Again, we're doing, we've got the pecs and uh, superficial muscles of the upper body, so we got sci-fi humoralis here at the bottom, pectoralis minor above that, pectoralis major above that one, and then we got pecto antibrachialis, the last one for that uh, pectoralis region for last week. So uh, for this week, once again, if you can find one of these muscles, so like sci-fi humoralis at the bottom, Pretty easy to count up, you know the order of them, so you can kind of find the muscles that way. So we're going to do that for the deltoids as well as for the arm muscles. So once again, sci-fi humoralis at the bottom, if you can find that, you just count up. Pectoralis minor above that, pectoralis major, and then pecto antibrachialis. On the <coughs> side here, coming from the ribs, going to the scapula, we got serratus anterior. On the posterior side, we got latissimus dorsi. Big back muscle is cut and reflective. Also cut and reflective, we have trapezius. And then the last one from last week are the rhomboids. So deep in there, going from the spine to the scapula. So if you guys want to call it out when I point to it, see if you guys remember. How about the third one up here? Factorals major, pull that. Chris minor, good. Good stuff, how about on the slide here? Stratus anterior, good. One that's cut at the top. Yeah, good job. Oh, this guy. Trapezius. Trapezius. Keep in there. Rhomboids. Rhomboids. Alright, you guys know what stuff. So I'll show you the new material for this week quickly on the cat and then we'll do the lesson. So this week we're doing rotator cuff muscles that are right on the scapula as well as. Uh, upper arm muscles and the deltoids, so your shoulder muscles and upper arm muscles. So I'll just go over them quickly without explaining all of it. Once again though, the names for these ones are actually going to indicate where they're coming from, where they're going for a lot of these ones, so think about that stuff when I'm going over it. So we got supraspinatus, super is referring to superior, which is above, and spinatus is referring to the spinous process, in this case for the scapula, so it's above the spinous process. So supraspinatus, we got infraspinatus below that. Lateral to that here on the side, we have teres major. And then coming out of the spinous process is the spinodeltoid. So if you want to think about it in order, once again, if you can find supraspinatus, you have spinodeltoid uh, in between that and infraspinatus. And then laterally, we have teres major. All right, and then on the inside wall of the scapula, we have subscapularis. So these are the rhomboids here, but all along that inside wall is subscapularis. So all along there, you can't really see any fibers coming out of it, but if you feel it, it's muscle all along there. And if you think subterranean is underground, subscapularis is kind of under the scapula. All right, so I'll do lateral arm muscles. So spinal deltoid, I also want to think in order for these ones, so like, just like Xi-Fi Humoralis counting up, if you can find spinal deltoid and then count over for the other deltoids. We have chromio deltoid in the middle, which is this guy here. So we got spinal deltoid, medial, we have a chromio deltoid, and then anteriorly, we have the clavo deltoid. So, other way, if you go the opposite way, if you can find clavo deltoid, you know, chromio deltoids in the middle, and then spino deltoid is on the back. So I'll go over where they come from and stuff, so that'll make more sense in a second. So once again, we got supraspinatus, infraspinatus, spino deltoid, teres major, chromio deltoid, and then clavo deltoid at the front here. So for lateral arm muscles, of the actual coming off the humerus and shoulder, we've got the lateral tricep head. So it's this uh, kind of a more of a sheety muscle for the triceps. At the bottom we have the long head of the triceps. And then on the lateral side we can see an elbow flexor, which is brachialis. So we got long head of the triceps, lateral head of the triceps, and brachialis above here. Anterior side for the upper arm. You can see long head of the triceps once again here at the bottom. So you can see it from the posterior and anterior side. Above that, 
we have the medial head of the triceps. So triceps refers to three heads for the muscles, so medial, lateral, and long. So once again, we got lateral on the outside, long, you can see from both sides at the bottom, and then medial on the anterior side of the calf. Then the other elbow flexor we can see anteriorly is bicep brachii. I think you all know where that is on your cells. But remember, anterior side, you can see bicep brachii. Lateral side, you can see brachialis. So they sound similar, but they're different. And then the last one we got this week, it's another one that's only in cats, called epitrochlearis. So the only one that's cut and reflected this week. So it's right here. If it's covered, you can't see any of the triceps or bicep brachii reflected. You can see those deeps there. So remember, epitrochlearis is the only one in cats, and it's the only one that's cut and reflected for this week. So, going over them again, we got supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, subscapularis, spinodeltoid, chromiodeltoid in the middle, clavodeltoid or clavobrachialis anterior. Got long head of the triceps, lateral head of the triceps, brachialis, anterior side. Once again, we got long head of the triceps, medial head of the triceps, and then bicep brachii, and then the last one is epitrochlearis. So, I'll go over it on the skeleton just to show you guys origin insertion, kind of give you a better idea of what it looks like on you. Alright, so supraspinatus is going to originate from the supraspinous fossa, so it's the names right in it, and it's above the spinous process in the scapula. So it's going to originate here, and then insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. So what it's going to do is stabilize the shoulder joint, as well as initiate abduction of the shoulder. So when you abduct the shoulder out like this, for like lateral raises for the exercise, the main one that you're going to be working is that of chromiodeltoid, but the initial movement, so probably right in this range, zero to like 30, 45 degrees kind of thing, that's supraspinatus that's going to kick off that motion. Next one we got infraspinatus, so it's going to originate from the infraspinous fossa, so below the spinous process. It's going to originate here, also go into the greater tubercular humerus. It's also going to stabilize the shoulder joint, as well as externally rotate the humerus or laterally rotate the humerus. So if you're standing like this, externally rotating the humerus out to the side, same with that. Immediately rotating or internally rotating, which I'm going to say throughout is the opposite. So bring your arms in like this, rotating that humerus externally and internally. So again, the inverse of that is going to externally rotate it. Next one we got is Therese Major. So it's going to originate on the lateral border of the scapula as well as the inferior angle down here, so this is where it's going to originate, and it's going to insert on the bicipital groove of the humerus, so right where the bicep tendon goes through. It's right here, and into there. And this guy's going to help out with internal rotation, as well as uh, shoulder extension, so bring your shoulders back with the latissimus dorsi, as well as, sorry, internal rotation, so the opposite of uh, inverse pass. And another internal rotator we have is subscapularis, so that guy that was deep. So this one's gonna originate on the supraspinous fossa, so underneath, sorry, subscapular fossa, <laughs> subscapularis, and insert into the lesser tubercle on the humerus, so a bit lower than the supra and infraspinatus. And this guy is also gonna internally rotate the shoulder, as well as provide some stabilization as well. So the two internal rotators we got are Therese Major, and subscapularis, I'm going to do this, inverse spinatus, and do the opposite, externally rotate. Next guys we got are the deltoids, so these ones all have the origination right in the name, and they're all going to insert into the same spot, which is the deltoid tuberosity on the humerus, which is on the side, lateral side of the shaft. So we got the clavicodeltoid, sorry, clavodeltoid, not clavicle, it's going to originate from the clavicle, clavodeltoid, it's going to be the most anterior one and it's gonna help out with flexion of the shoulder as well as medial rotation. So when you bring your arms up in front of you with pec major, the uh, clavodeltoid is gonna help you out with that as well as medial rotation. 
uh, spinal deltoid, sorry, acromial deltoid is the next one. It's going to come from the acromion process, go into the same spot. Once again, this is going to be the main abductor of the shoulders, so supraspinatus kicks it off. And then once you get into this range of motion, it's the acromial deltoid kicking in and taking over. The last one, the spinal deltoid. So name, once again, it's going to originate from the spinous process of the scapula. Once again, insert into the deltoid tuberosity. And this guy's going to help out with extension of the shoulders with the lats, as well as, uh, which guy is that? Therese major, and as well as lateral rotation. So we got another external or lateral rotator of the shoulder. And for the arm muscles, we got brachialis and bicep brachii on the anterior side. So brachialis is going to originate on the anterior shaft of the humerus and insert onto the coronoid process of the ulna. So guys got to remember for tests and stuff, especially for next week, ulna is on your pinky side of your hand, radius is on your thumb side. So brachialis is only going to cross the elbow joint, so it's only going to help out with elbow flexion. Bicep brachii actually crosses the shoulder joint and the elbow joint, so it's going to help out with elbow flexion as well as shoulder flexion. Uh, so bicep brachii, it has two heads. Bicep, that's what that refers to. Long head is going to originate on this supraglenoid uh, tubercle. So glenoid fossa is this area where the humerus is actually going to insert into the scapula. So supra is referring to above, superior. So supraglenoid tubercle up here. It's going to insert on the radial tuberosity, the radius. And the short head is going to come from the coronoid process of the scapula. So as you can see, it crosses the shoulder joint and the elbow joint, so it's gonna move both those joints. Last guys, not gonna do epitrochlearis, so obviously it's on humans. We've got the triceps, so we've got three heads, long head, medial and lateral. Uh, the long head's the only one that's gonna cross the shoulder joint, so once again, across the shoulder and elbow joint, it's gonna help with shoulder extension, as well as elbow extension. And they're all gonna insert onto the olecranon process, which is right here which is essentially your elbow where it's the pointy part you can feel. So medial and lateral head, they're not gonna cross the shoulder joint, they're only gonna do elbow extension. Lateral one's gonna come from the lateral side of the humerus, medial is gonna come from the medial side of the humerus. So hope that helped out, and I'll go over on the cap one more time. I'll go over one time.